So did you guys like do something to make Games Workshop mad? Everybody, welcome to the GMG review. Today we're taking a look at Deathwing Assault, the new uh, army set for the Deathwing for Games Workshop's Warhammer 40,000, which they kindly sent along as a complimentary review copy. Um, now, this is going to be a bit different of a format because it's like a gajillion degrees below freezing, and that means my <laughs> my my soundstage is somewhat inhospitable unless I run the heater back there. It's just fire and fans. There's no way. Now, as you can tell, that ain't gonna make for good audio. <laughs> it sounds like there's a jet plane taking off uh, every like probably six to seven minutes back there to keep it at like a human temperature because it's a it's a warehouse, right? So it doesn't stay warm super well, even though I've done my best to keep it warm back there. So we're doing the review in a slightly different way, new format. Also, I'm trying things out, so you guys might just like this format better. Um, I made a copious notes. I should buy stock and legal pads. Uh, I made about four pages of notes. And what I've done, instead of um, doing like a read-along like I usually do, today we're going to do a, a breakdown of all the unit changes for the data sheets. Talk about the two new sort of like... Um, uh, what's it called? Detachment types that are in here. We have on top of the uh, the standard one that was already available. We have the uh, I've forgotten their names. The inner circle is the first one, and that's basically what this army box is designed to make, um, as well as the company of hunters, which is kind of like the Ravenwing one. So you kind of have three different attachment styles in here, um, and along with this box set, you're given the models to make effectively a pretty decent start at one of them. You get almost a thousand points in this box set. You're gonna get two boxes of the new Deathwing Terminators that are biggest size sort of Primaris Terminators. Um, yeah, with very nice miniatures. Obviously the new big Terminators are very cool. And new Deathwing Knights, which have new Deathwing Knight sort of like size uh, and chunkiness and are replacing the old Deathwing Knight models, which were from seventh edition, yeah. 7th seven, and 8th edition Warhammer 40,000. No, 6th and 7th edition Warhammer 40,000 with the Dark Vengeance box set because the Dark Angels were like the main protagonist in that box. They got all their, their... That was their most recent sort of model glow up. Although they were kind of hit and miss with the sculpts back then. Um, so it's pretty cool. I mean, you're looking at... Uh, 410 points worth of like Deathwing Terminators, 290 points worth of Knights. So you're sitting at 770 points when you throw it. No, 785 points when you throw in Belial, who is the uh, the character miniature in here. So not bad, but a thousand points. It's a cool army box if you want to start off with Deathwing. And of course, it's a very it's 16 models, right? So a thousand points, 16 model army is pretty doable for most people to do. So if you're thinking about starting Dark Angels, this is a cool way to do it, especially if you have the Leviathan box. You've already got some Space Marine models. They're all compatible with this. Um, and this codex, of course, is not standalone. So there's my my preamble, my waffle before all this starts. Uh, let's talk about this book and what changes have happened. Uh, and you can follow around in the 40K app. If you already have the 40K app or if you have the PDFs that were available at the launch, launch of 10th edition Warmer 40,000, um, they're, they're basically, I'm, I'm going to like, they're the same with some few changes. That's what I'm going to go through and talk about. So the bad news first. There is one new data sheet in here. So we're going to do data sheets. Then we're going to do um, the uh, the detachments. Then we're going to do the enhanced, the campaign stuff. Then I'll give my overall thoughts when we're done. So data sheets is what we're going to start off with. So let's dive in. Data sheets. Like I said, you got one new one, the companions. They've been previewed on Warhammer Community. They're pretty cool. Big greatsword guys. Um, the, of course, like the, the, the T on them is that they are most likely fallen that were, uh, hanging out like they're, they're pre heresy, dark angels that were hanging out that had betrayed, uh, the emperor they're hanging out with Lionel and L Johnson as he's like collected them and like explained them during his like weird, the green night warp journey that he's been on for the last 10,000 years. Um, and they are his like companions now. That's why they don't speak. They're all only talking to each other through like their helmet communicators. 
Um, and I think it's a cool background story for them. Now, uh, that's your new unit, but you lost a bunch of units. You lost uh, the Strike Master, the Talon Master, which is like the old, and the old Sam Ale Master Deathwing on a, on a Talon Master on a, a like a, the old uh, twin assault cannon. It was very cool at the time, <laughs> Land Speeder. Uh, and you lost the Deathwing Command Squad. They're just gone. They just don't exist anymore. Uh, those data sheets are Feeny, so it's kind of unfortunate for you know veteran Dark Angel players. Those just are kind of, they were unique units. Um, you could argue they've been replaced by the Deathwing Terminator Captain, just like the standard generic Astartes one. Um, there isn't really a company commander on a bike, so that doesn't like the Talon Master and the the old like there's no there's no character on a land speeder. There's not really an equivalent, but they've given you something. They've given a way to use an old unit that's kind of like a Talon Master, I guess. Anyway, we'll, we'll go through and talk about this. Uh, and also, there's kind of some baffling just unit changes. So I'm going to go through unit by unit from this army book and talk about each of them. So we'll start with, of course, the big one, Lionel Johnson. Uh, he went down 15 points, which is good. But then the only other change is they have his damage output. <laughs> the sweep attack on his sword was damage too. Um, it is now damage one. So yeah, that's kind of sad. He went from being like, uh, I can kind of dive into any even resilient unit and take them out with 16 attacks at damage two. Like, and there was even like a big article. I'm pretty sure where they were like, look at how cool this guy is. He can just beef out big units. Uh, that's just gone. He can't do it anymore. He can, he only does damage one. So yeah, Fealty's, filthy sweep attack isn't great. That's the only change to him. He just got cheaper and they have his damage output in melee. And for a melee-centric miniature, that's a pretty big incitement. So, you poor guy. Uh, all of his other rules stayed the same. So if you're following along on the app, everything's the same. Uh, yeah, 365 points instead of 380. Uh, the Companions, 210 points. This is a brand new unit, which is pretty cool. So I'm, I will go through them overall. Um, they've got kind of like Blade Guard veteran stats, but no invulnerable save. Although, of course, you could get a version of it with two character attachments. Movement six, their um, top is four with three wounds, three plus saves, leadership six plus, and their obsec two, which is kind of cool. They have, like, even though they're like an elite unit, they have some decent objective control. Uh, they got heavy bolt pistols, the same as they have bolt pistols on like assault intercessors. Um, they got calvinite greatswords that have the same sort of like st uh, strike or sweep ability. Strike has lethal hits, which is nice. I'll see your critical rolls uh, become lethal hits. And then there are four attacks at three plus, strength six, minus one, two damage. Uh, and then the sweep attack gets sustained hits two. This is like a weird thing to me. The attack stat doesn't go off. So they just switch their trait. They lose a damage though. Um, so there are four attacks. At, like I, I can't really see a point of doing it. Like just give them the extra attacks. Instead they get sustained hits too. So they could potentially um, have eight, uh, sorry, plus eight hits. Yeah, so you could potentially get 12 strength, like like one damage hits with them as opposed to, but you have to roll four sixes. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know what the math is on that. Someone better at the math could probably explain to me if that's a better deal or not. It just seems like, like give them one extra attack, you know, like give them like five attacks with the sustained hits too. Cause you could just, you could just have it be objectively worse. <laughs> um, yeah, and then any character that can be joined to a Stern Guard squad can be joined to them. So the main Space Marine Codex characters that get attached to... Because there's not... You you attach this book to the Space Marine Codex. I think I didn't say that at the beginning. If it's not clear, there's a supplement, not a full codex. Um, so they give you like... Uh, if you can join this type of unit in the regular codex, you can join this unit for a lot of these units. But that's already in all the Dark Angel um, sheets that were available for free. Uh, they have the Braziers of Judgment. Uh, while a character model is leading this unit... Each time attack targets this unit, they're minus one to hit. Um, and then, but like they're not minus one to hit all the time. So you have to have a, a character leading them, basically. I mean, their companions are supposed to be a bodyguard unit, but it sucks the ability doesn't activate when they're on their own. Uh, and then enmity for the unworthy. Each time a model in this unit makes an attack that targets a character, add one to the hit roll. So when you're attacking characters, that's really handy for things like knights that might count as being characters. I think they still count as characters. I knew that was that's the way it turned into when you would give them like traits and stuff. Uh, and then it's three to six of them, uh, and they are 210 points each, uh, per unit. So you could have uh, 410 points for, um, or sorry, 105 points for the three-man unit, 210 if you take them all the way up to six. And that's it. So, like, no invul, no feel, no pain. You could buy them an invul by sticking Azrael in there because he gives out the four-plus invul to his unit. Um, and if you took Lazarus, who still has his fight on death on a four-plus ability, you could have them fight on death. So... 
They're okay. Uh, I think they kind of need, like, they have to get the minus one hit, which they need. They have to have a character anyway. Azrael's only 15 points more than, or no, wait, he's a bit more than that, actually. So he's 105. He's 35 points more than Lazarus. I think Lazarus might be the better deal of the two. I can't decide. I, I can't decide. They have to get into melee. Like, this is not a melee edition of Warhammer 40k. Oh, they they almost never are. They're shooting almost every edition of the game is a shooting edition. So like a melee only unit. They need some way to get into melee. So I feel like Azrael's the better choice here. But then you're spending 105 points on a big character and they they have to get into combat. Uh Azrael himself, same exact points, same as everything. Just no change. If you're looking at him right now, he's exactly the same in this book. Uh Asmodee, uh he's 65 points. He lost all his cool mixed melee weapons. So he had a thing before where he had eight attacks because he had five attacks with his Crozius and then three attacks that were extra attacks, the Blades of Reason, that gained precision and like character bonuses. They're just gone. That's That that was too cool a rule. Now he's got um, either a strike attack where he's got his damage to Crozius or a sweep attack where he just gains eight attacks on a two plus at one damage. It's kind of boring. I liked his cool mixed ability before better. I mean... He's down five points from 70 and lost his character precision thing. But that was what made him unique. He was like a character hunter. That was his whole thing. He was fixated on like hunting down characters. And so he had these cool extra attacks that you got them all the time anyway. But they were really good against characters because he would go like body and tackle someone, try and bring them back to interrogate them. I don't know. I think that's – it's just like it, it like it's cleaner mechanically, but it's not interesting. And it kind of takes some of the flavor away from the Dark Angel characters that he's not got this like unique mix of rules that makes him a character hunter. I appreciated that about the last set of rules. And it's just, I don't know. I don't know. It, mechanically cleaner doesn't make for more interesting necessarily. Uh, Belial, exact same. New model, which is nice. Um, he's just, he's Belial. He's 85 points. Uh, Ezekiel. This is, Ezekiel still makes me happy. He is the last remaining Jez Goodwin Dark Angel miniature. Uh, Jez Goodwin's original Dark Angels are some of the nicest like second edition miniatures in 40k that's eight editions ago though that's like that's like late 90s um and the azrael obviously the new plastic azrael is like an homage to that miniature like it's clearly using that as the template i like that ezekiel's still here i like that there's at least one jez goodwin space marine because i mean the guy who designed the guy who innovated and pioneered what the space marine looks like what the silhouette of a space marine is that we all recognize um i like that he still has a miniature in this book uh, to that being said, he's exactly the same, pretty much. Uh, but he went uh, down to 70 points, which is cool. He got cheaper. Uh, then we've got Sammy, Sam I.L. No change, but he went up five points for some reason. Uh, don't really know why. And then Lazarus, exact same, no changes, still 70 points. All right, here comes the, some more sad news. I'm going to flip my notes page here. Whoa, Deathwing. Oh, Deathwing. You lost all your mixed weapon options. There's no more mixing Thunder Embers and Storm Shields and Assault Weapons with the Deathwing Terminator Squad. That was kind of a hallmark of the Deathwing, so I am kind of bummed about it, but this is just in line with this box set only makes Deathwing Terminators with tactical Terminator weapons, so like Storm Bolters and Power Fists and Chain Fists and Power Swords, and then the Plasma Gun. So that's how you get to make them. This is the We're in this like new... Make it easy. You can't screw up building it, but also, you know, if you follow the instructions, you can't screw up building it, but also every squad's going to kind of look exactly the same forever. And there's not a lot of like mixing and matching inside your units. That's that's it. Caught up to the Deathwing. They had cool old box sets until now. So they get cool miniatures that look great, but they look exactly the same and all the squads are kind of going to be cookie cutter. Um, although you could take them with an assault cannon, heavy flamer, plasma cannon, or a cyclone missile launcher. Yeah, they're 205 points. Their rules are they they lost uh, uh, all the assault options, and then they went up five points. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't really know. I don't know why. I don't know why that bothers me so much, but it does. Other than that, they're just a Terminator squad. They still have Deathwing, um, which is the ignore mod uh, like mod like Deathwing is just the first company rule. They ignore all the modifiers to your weapons, skill, skill, leadership. Like they're just the same as Terminators from the term the regular Codex. Um. And they have teleport homers. Uh, their, their big difference between them and regular Terminators is they have a Watcher in the Dark. So once per game, you can activate the Watcher for a Feel No Pain 4 plus against Mortal Wounds. Then you remove the Watcher miniature. Um, and then the like the fact that you can take a Plasma Cannon. 
So you can get D3 shots either overcharged and hazardous with blast um, and strength eight minus three, two damage, or just the strength seven minus one, two, but one damage with 36 inch range. So like uh, they're cool. They're Deathwing. They get the Deathwing rule. That was it. And they got they got more expensive and they lost all their assault weapon options. So no more four wound thunder hammers. That's it. All right, Deathwing Knights. Uh, these guys, oh boy, <laughs> um, just objectively got worse. They went up to 290 points from 235 points. And that's just the beginning. They lost the damage on their Maces of Absolution. They all come with Maces of Absolution. If you have the old miniatures, like the flails and stuff would count, I guess, as power weapons. Or maybe just a great weapon of the Unforgiven. You could just call it that instead, where it has uh, Devastating Wounds and Sustained Hits 1. The core stat line is exactly the same. They're a 4-wound Terminator. They still have their damage reduction. They still have a Watcher in the Dark. Um, and they have, it, the Inner Circle is the minus 1 damage thing. But they don't get Deathwing. I, this was the thing I thought was weird looking through the current, like, old old now, but, like, the stat line from the, the free PDF uh, is, like, they're still Deathwing. Wouldn't they also, like, if they're the best Deathwing, why wouldn't they also get the ignore modifiers rule and the bonus to Oath of the Moment? Like, they have Oath of the Moment, but they don't get Deathwing. Uh, I, I'm here standing for them to get Deathwing. So yeah, they just lost the damage on all their melee weapons uh, from Mace of Absolution because they all, sorry, have Mace of Absolution. It's one Night Master and four Deathwing Knights. The Night Master is equipped with a great weapon of the Unforgiven, which means he's got that, it's a flail basically, devastating wound, sustain hits one, uh, five attacks, two plus, strength six, minus two, two damage. And then the Maces are four attacks, two plus, strength six, minus one. And they used to be three damage, now they're two. Uh, you can you can trade them for power weapons if you have old models. You get an attack, five attacks, and they're just power weapon profiles. So strength six minus two, one damage. And then a relic weapon um, is your option for the grant the Nightmaster, and it's strength five. Sorry, strength uh, six attacks, uh, two plus strength seven minus two, two damage. It feels like you would always take the relic weapon with lethal hits because it's an extra attack. Like I get it doesn't have sustained hit one, but it's it's higher strength and an extra attack and just more reliable. Ah, Devastating Wounds, I guess, is cool. I don't know. But that's it. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't think any of that's worth a 45 point. No, wait, 35, uh, 55 point price hike. <laughs> and they just objectively got worse. Their damage, like they're a melee only unit. So anytime their basic melee weapon gets like, like worsened, they just seem like they got worse. All right, so into the Ravenwing stuff. Uh, the Raven, oh yeah, and like you don't have a Ravenwing, a Deathwing Command Squad anymore. They're just gone. So no Deathwing Command Squad, no Strike Master to lead them. So you're gonna have a Captain in there if you have anything. And then uh, I guess like you could take the Librarians could add onto them. So you have like a Terminator Librarian. And it was a Terminator basically could, could be out of that unit. Um, Cause anyone who can lead a Terminator Squad can be attached to this unit. Same with the Deathwing, obviously. All right, Ravenwing Command Squad. Yeah, we lost our Talon Master. So instead of having a character to join your Black Knights or Outrider squads, because Ravenwing are just gone. They're not a, like the Ravenwing bike squad is just not, it's the same with the Space Marine bike squad. There's not a unit anymore, which sucks because I really like those 6th and 7th edition Ravenwing biker models. Um, the Command Squad is now a character that is a squad. It's a weird rule. But this is the biggest thing to know about them. They all gained a wound and went to four wounds. They have the new ability of um, you can attach the whole unit to Outriders or Black Knights. So think of them as a character that's three models, each with four wounds. Um, that's the only really core unit profile that they've changed. And they can be attached like a character to a Ravenwing um, Black Knight squad or a uh, Outrider squad. The Apothecary works the same way um, as it did before, where it can re it can grow a model back every command phase. You can't bring back characters in ATVs, though, um, like the Invader. The Banner increases their OBSEC and the uh, Honor or Death um, when they add one to advance and charge rolls um, while it contains the Champion. Uh, and they can heroically intervene for zero CPs. That's it. Other than that, they're exactly the same, like the same as they were. They're just like a weird character model now. Uh, and they have the mounted grenades, Imperium, Ravenwing, Command Squad, and the champion counts as a character. So the character, the champion has the character tag, which is cool. So I think it triggers off characters, triggers off the champion. So he's kind of replacing the Strike Master. Uh, and they are, I think, down points. No, they're up points. 
They, they're down to four. Like you got four models in the previous stat line. You have three models now, but they're up to 185 points because they can attach to a unit. It's weird. I mean, there are 12 wounds attachments to like a Black Knight squad. So they get to add to a cool, fast, close combat unit, 12 extra wounds for 185 points, which is kind of neat. Uh, Black Knights are exactly the same and they went up to um, 115 points. So they had a, a, a price hike, maybe because the character joins them. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then we're on to the the other units <laughs> like the Red Wing Dark Shroud. It still looks like it was designed by a, a meme generator because <laughs> it's like, how do we make this thing more dark angel-y? We'll just stick more angels on it, obviously. Well, how do we make it look like it's faster? Just bolt more engines on it, obviously. <laughs> it's still so dumb looking. Um, it just went up. Uh, Five points for no reason. It still looks terrible. Land Speeder Vengeance. Uh, it is still looks like a, a copy and paste error of, of yeah. That's a, it looks like someone's just hit Control V too many times. You know when like you copy and paste and like something's something's like hang the program and the paste isn't happening. So you just hit it like seven more times and then it just auto pastes all at once. <laughs> if my Photoshop is lagging, sometimes it'll happen. That's what this looks like. It looks like somebody hit copy paste too many times on the engine. Um, and yeah, it went down ten points, but it lost damage on both the plasma profiles. So. Uh, it used to be two for the standard like uh, plasma storm battery damage, went down to one, and then the supercharge went down to two from three. So big output nerf, uh, and then we're onto the dark talon. Went down ten points though, even though it like lost a point of damage across the whole thing. Uh, the dark shroud. Uh, oh no, we did the dark shroud. Already. Dark talon. Dark talons. We're talking same profile. Down ten points. It's only two hundred points now. Uh, the nephilim jet fighter. It's identical, but it's down 25 points to 185, which is nice. So your two planes went down in points. Um, and that's it for data sheets. So yeah, the 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 cutting was unkind. I'm sad to say you lost a lot of you lost a lot of like what made you unique. Um there's a couple of neat things in there. I think the I think the adding the command squad to the existing bikes is a creative way of like getting rid of those characters that aren't going to have models. Cause they're obviously reducing the range of the dark angel range a little bit. Um, that's a creative way of doing it, of making that command squad still feel pertinent and they're still cool model kits. So I like the fact that those exist. Uh, your combat patrol is still in here. The vengeful brethren. This box that's kind of neat. Uh, you get the Gravis power armor captain. You get a big fat unit of a 10 intercessors. You get five hell blasters and a unit of blade guard veterans. I do actually really like this combat patrol, um, mostly because it's got almost 20 models in it. That's a big combat patrol for the Space Marines because like the core Space Marine one that's in Leviathan is 11, 12 models. <laughs> it's two characters. This one's like proper size squads in one character. I'm into it. I like the fact that it's got like some range support, like the Hell Blasters. It's got some melee stuff. Like it's just a good mixed. This, this would feel like for the price tag these combat patrols are, this would feel like the start to an army. Does that make sense? Like... And it's not too much elite stuff. Like it's a good mix of elite and other things. Um, so I'm excited. I like this comp patrol. I think this is a cool comp patrol. I would definitely, and the painting guide in here is cool for it too. Um, they get like a, ver they get Oath of the Moment as their, their core ability. So they just get the Space Marine ability. Like they kind of introduce you to the Space Marine Codex and not too much to the Dark Angel Codex. Uh, your enhancements for your captain, you can get uh, sustained hits one for uh, determined combatant or wages of retribution. Um, each time an Adeptus Astartes model from your army destroys your Oath of the Moment target. If the bearer is on the battlefield on a four plus, you get a CP. So that's cool. It's, it's, it's not too space marine. -y. And then the, um, the, the default, like extra objectives are very dark angel -y. So it's hunt hunter of heretics. Each time an Astartes unit from your army destroys a character, get five VPs and at the end of battle, all the characters, they get five VPs for comp patrol. It's a big swing. And the optional one is take the stronghold. Before the battle at the start of the deploy armies uh, step, your opponent must select one objective marker that's not in their deployment zone. At the end of your turn, you score five if you hold that one. So you're either trying to like assault a, a, a stronghold or kill characters. Um, and you got three strats, all very dark range. You have unyielding. Um, at the end of the phase, um, just after the enemy has selected a unit to fight. Uh, sorry, after a unit selected to fight. And then at the end of the phase, or sorry, until the end of the phase, each time a model unit is destroyed. If that model is not fought yet, roll a six, a D six, um, adding one if the result was for Blade Guard veterans. And on a four plus, 
they get to make their attacks. So it's a it's a fight on death. It's a three for Blade Guard veterans instead of a four uh, for one CB. Uh, March of Vengeance. Um, it's the fight phase for one of your Astartes units. Until the end of the phase, each time a model in the unit makes a consolidate, you can go six instead of three. And then Relic Munitions for your guns. Um, range weapons excluding plasma weapons and plasma centers have the lethal hits ability. So your guns basically get tuned up with like cool bullets. And I like that. That's all the data sheet stuff, really. Um, your, uh, your master Zakariel, uh, is a cool, like, um, four plus Gravis guy. So he's got six wounds, pretty beefy, bolt storm gauntlet, power fist and a relic chain sword. I kind of liked that they gave him the relic chain sword. Just I think it's cool to see chain swords get used on character models more. Um, and then he has damage against him with refuse to yield as his like special ability. Um, the intercessor squad is just an intercessor squad, uh, but you can divide it into five models. It's like you can split it before the game starts. Hell blasters are hell blasters. Blade guard veterans are blade guard veterans. Yeah, no bonuses are changed really though that I can notice. Um, and that's a combat patrol. So let's talk about detachments. All right, new portions. We've done all the data sheets now gone through the lamentations of losing stuff and hopefully uh, what you gained, hopefully gaining companions was worth all the stuff that's not there anymore. Um, let's talk about the uh, Unforgiven Task Force. It didn't change too much. Uh, I'll be honest, it's pretty much the same. Uh, some of your war gear options, your enhancements changed a little bit. So the enhancements, uh, the shrouds now, uh, oh sorry, the shrouds identical. It's the Stubborn Tenacity, it's up to 20 points. Um, and it works uh, only if you're battle shocked. Uh, the Heavenfall Blade is now called Weapons of the First Legion, uh, and it's 15 points, but it works the same. Uh, the pants exactly the same. Now, all your stratagems are identical to what they currently are from the free PDF. So let's talk about the Inner Circle Task Force. Like I said, this is the one we're building out of this box. Uh, so it's a, it's it, obviously you can use any models you want, any detachment. It, this focuses on Deathwing stuff. So your detachment rule that you gain if you play this detachment is Vowed Target. Um, at the start of your command phase, select an objective marker. Until the start of your next command phase, that objective marker is your vowed objective marker. Each time a Deathwing infantry model from your army makes an attack that targets a unit within range of your vowed objective marker, add one of the wound roll. So basically, whenever you're trying to storm something, pick an enemy objective that's all swarming with guys, you get plus one wound against them. Um, and it's not like, it's not restricting who's getting wounded better. So vehicles would be wounded better, make it really hard for knights to hold objectives. Um, cause plus one to wound when you're wounding on sixes gets that swing to fives is a big deal against those big units, but it only affects your infantry. And obviously the idea behind that is you're mostly playing with Deathwing. Uh, restrictions your army can include dark angels units, but it cannot include any Adeptus Astartes units drawn from any other chapter. So because you're inner circle, no, no having any other chapter guys hanging out. <laughs> No one, you no one can see what you're doing. <laughs> and then your hand sense, you got um, Champion of the Deathwing. This costs 15 points. Uh, it's a Deathwing model only. Melee weapons equipped by the bearer have the lethal hits ability, and each time the bearer makes a melee attack, if it's within range of your vowed objective marker, a critical hit's on a five. So when you're trying to storm the objective, you get better at fighting in melee. Eye of the Unseen. Uh, this is 10 points, Deathwing only. Each time you target the bearer's unit with a stratagem, uh, roll a d6, adding one if the uh, bearer's within range of your route objective on a five plus gain of CP. So it's like a refund. Singular will, uh, this is 20 points, definitely only. Each time the bearer unit uh, piles in or consolidates, it's plus three inches, so bigger pile in moves. Again, handy for big 40 mil based fighty terminators. And then finally, Deathwing Assault. This is 30 points. Deathwing models with the Deep Strike ability. Uh, the bearer's unit can be set up using the Deep Strike ability in the reinforcement step of your first, second, or third mission phases, regardless of any mission rules. So basically, when you attach this character to your Deathwing squad, they can show up first turn. Don't, don't you worry. They're here. They arrive. So that's cool. Um, you got Armor of Contempt, which is the standard Astartes rule, where you basically uh, offset AP. Um, for one CP and you got martial mastery for one CP has to target deathwing infantry. Um, and that has not been selected to fight yet this phase. That's in the fight phase. Uh, in fact, until the end of the phase, each time a model in your unit makes an attack, reroll wound rolls of one. And if you're in range of your vat objective, you reroll the wound roll instead. So really good at taking down big things, right? So like if you vowed an objective, it's got like something big, big T8 thing on it, or like a greater demon or something, you know, it's like T8, T9. 
um, and you're winning on sixes normally, you're winning on fives re-rolling. That's a huge swing. Basically, this is like tuning up the fact that you've got all these strength six, strength seven melee weapons, and they're great against infantry, but they're not great against like heavy armor. It's allowing you to pull down big things with these rules. Uh, duty unto death. Uh, in the fight phase, just after an enemy unit selected to fight, one Deathwing uh, unit from your army that was selected as the target of one or more enemy units attacks um, until the end of the phase. Each time a model in your unit's destroyed, it's a fight on death, basically. Uh, you roll d6 and you add one if you're next to your bad objective. On a four plus, you get to fight before you're removed from play. A Relic Teleportarium. I like that this is letting you enhance your spaceship for one CP. Uh, when during your movement phase, the target's a Deathwing unit from your army that is arriving using the Deep Strike ability. Uh, effect, you can set this up anywhere. You can set them up anywhere in the battlefield. That's more than three horizontally from the enemy. Uh, but the restriction is until the end of the turn, your unit's not eligible to declare a charge. So you can show up anywhere outside of three, but you can't charge. So shoot a unit shows up outside of three, near some vulnerable thing, doesn't want to charge them either. You get to blast super up close. Um, yeah, it's, it's handy. You can't charge though. But it means that you could maybe heroically intervene right later on if you've trapped them and you're on the objective because you're within three. Basically, it feels like it's allowing you to storm the enemy objective. But it's your movement phase, which means teleport homer stuff. You can't use this on teleport homer stuff because it's not, not outside your movement phase. Um, Wrath of the Lion, uh, when your charge phase, target a Deathwing infantry unit from your army that just ended a charge move. And then effect, select one enemy unit within engagement range of your unit and roll 1d6 for each model in your unit, adding one if the enemy unit's within range of your vowed objective. On a four plus, they take a mortal wound up to a maximum of three. So you get impact hits. And then finally, unmatched fortitude. Uh, when your opponent's shooting phase, just after your uh, enemy unit's been selected as its targets, uh, one Deathwing infantry unit from your army is the target. Um, it has to be the target of one or more attacks. And then effect, until the end of the phase, each time an attack targets your unit, um, if the strength characteristic is greater than your unit's toughness, you're minus one to wound. So it's not quite like an old transhuman physiology, but if it it pr would turn twos into threes and threes into fours. Uh, but it has to be at least when you're on a three plus to make it into a four plus. It's not turning everything into four plus though. <laughs> That's it. So that's the Inner Circle. Uh, I like that. Inner Circle Task Force. It's clearly trying to allow you to play with lots of Terminators and give you a chance to, to fight in a way that would allow you to fight the things they wouldn't normally get at fighting. So like big giant robots and tanks and stuff that's super high toughness that they're just not really equipped to do. Like they're equipped to shred infantry, no problem. These guys, these guys kill gene stealers all day, but they don't necessarily kill, you know, walkers and tanks and giant greater demons and stuff. This kind of gives you a chance to do that. All right, Company of Hunters. Uh, this is the Ravenwing style army. Uh, your detachment rules that you are masters of maneuver. Uh, roots maneuvers. Uh, Adept Sistardi's units from your army that are eligible to shoot in a turn where they advanced or fell back. So you can just be moving fast all the time and still shooting and uh, and falling back. And it's not just, it's all Astartes units. It's all your vehicles, everything. I'm trying to think what that'd be really cool to apply to, but like, yeah. It's just everyone can advance and shoot still. So like, so can your intercessors. So can anybody. This feels like the one you would take lots of different units in because it doesn't say Ravenwing. It's just Astartes. Uh, the restriction though is uh, your army can include Dark Angels units, but can include any Astartes units drawn from another chapter. If that makes sense. And then keywords, Outriders gain battle line. That's handy. That's nice of them. All right, so your enhancements. We've got the Mastercrafted Weapon for Ravenwing model only. Melee weapons gain precision, so you can kill characters with them. This one is a 10-point upgrade. Mounted Strategist for your Ravenwing models. Uh, the bearer is eligible to declare a charge in which it advanced or fell back, so he gets to add that to his list of things he can do. Um, and that one's going to cost you 30 points. Uh, Master of Maneuver, uh, this is 15 points, Ravenwing model only. If the bearer's unit starts the battle in strategic reserve, its point value does not count towards the combined total of units. So basically it's going to uh, be able to uh, not like, it won't restrict what else you can take. Um, and for the purpose of setting up that unit on the battlefield, treat the current battle round as being one higher than it actually is. So you could turn up on round one. And then finally, Recon Hunter, Ravenwing model only. Models in the Barrow's unit have the Scout's nine inches ability. So this can only really be bought for the command squad. Like this is only, only your Ravenwing command squad can buy these upgrades. 
Because they're the only Ravenwing characters that aren't epic heroes, right? Because the, the Talon Master's gone. So they kind of had to figure it away. If they're going to make a Ravenwing detachment, how do we allow any of this to happen? Because we're getting rid of the characters and Sam is the only other one who's there. Now, I think, I don't know if Sam Isle has any of these enhancements. I didn't check that because that's not really like a rule thing. Uh, nope, he's just a dude. He's just got Grandmaster of the Ravenwing. So he has, ma where is it? He has Mounted Strategist because his Master of the Ravenwing rule is the same as Mounted Strategist is. All right. So, oh, and uh, Recon Hunter costs how many points? 20 points. Well, let's talk about the, uh, the, the stratagems now. They all cost one CP. They're all, all identical. Uh, you got Armor of Contempt, just like all Space Brains do. Uh, you've got Hunter, well, I guess I shouldn't say all, because I'm sure there'll be some that don't in the, in the, in the, in the end, but this is like their big thing. Uh, Hunter's Trail in the command phase, one Ravenwing mounted unit from your army that's within range of an objective marker you control can be targeted by this. And the effect is that objective marker remains under your control. So until your opponent comes and takes it, you walk away from it. Uh, Talon Strike in your shooting phase or the fight phase, the target's one Ravenwing mounted unit from your army that has not been selected to shoot or fight this phase. The effect is... Until the end of the phase, each time a model in your unit makes an attack that targets an infantry character or mounted character unit, add one to the wound roll. So you're hunting characters. Death on the wind when you're shooting phase. One Ravenwing unit from your army uh, that's just shot can be selected for the target of this. And the effect is select one enemy unit that was hit by one or more of those attacks. That unit must take a battle shock test. When doing so, if one or more Ravenwing unit from your army is within six of that enemy unit, subtract one from the test. Uh, high speed focus. This is for one CP. Uh, when your opponent's shooting phase just after an enemy unit selected its targets and then one of your raving unit that was targeted is the target. The effect is a minus one to hit. So you can just be like high speed focus. Uh, it's almost like a blind grenade or a smoke grenade thing. And then finally, rapid reappraisal. Uh, this is in the end of your opponent's fight phase. The target's one Ravenwing unit from your army that is not within engagement range of one or more enemy units. And then you can remove it from the battlefield and place it into strategic reserve. So you just basically bamf out a unit that was not engaged in combat at the end of the fight phase and be like, bye, I'm going to go over here now and grab this objective later on because it can come in. So, <laughs> so that, that therein ends the detachment stuff. We got three detachments in these books. So this is kind of setting the standard for what's going to look like for these um supplement codexes for space marines obviously we were kind of in ninth edition we were kind of working off the eighth edition ones not everybody got like a ninth edition one i don't think like the imperial fists um and so i like that there's at least two other ways of playing the army uh because it makes them feel kind of like real boy armies you know all of a sudden extra attachments i like the attachments are themed but man oh man it's gonna sting a little bit for people who've been playing dark angels for a long time and tell me in the comments what you think about that um that you've got, I know at least one buddy, Paul, my buddy Paul has been playing Dark Angels since we were in high school. <laughs> He's, he has a record that goes back into time. He's going to be mad about this. <laughs> um, uh, because you, you, you're you kind of, there's kind of that like, uh, what's the word? That like uh, inevitability of older models that we know are leaving the range that are like iconic to certain armies or that are certain characters um, that, you know, are kind of like beloved or been around for a long time. The people just don't have access to anymore. So like on the one hand, I understand why they're, they're that's being sifted out of here. Uh, on the other hand, it does make the army feel, I don't know, very mo modern. There's like a blandness to some of the modern design. A great example is like the, those melee weapons on Asmodai. I don't know why they, they would feel the need to do that. Yes, it's cleaner. It's more in line with like the way melee attacks and stuff are done now. But there's not really, I can't see the argument for the reason why you couldn't have kept that more interesting precision strike with the Blades of Reason to make that guy feel like a special character. Now he just feels like an interrogator chaplain. Like, hey, cool, it's an interrogator chaplain. He gives you rerolls. He's got his cool like leadership ability. But he's not Asmodai anymore. He's not he's not obsessively hunting characters and having a rule that allows him to obsessively hunt characters in an interesting way. And that to me is kind of like my overall vibe with this codex. Wonderful miniatures. They look fantastic. The Deathwing part of this book is, I think, the strongest. And that's not to say it's it's good. I don't think these guys were winning any tournaments before this. So I don't I don't know why, what was going on with like breaking up Lionel. Um 
I'm sure he was cool and getting used in other armies, but like he got, he got really hit with a hammer. Uh, but there's that, that sort of sense that in making everything feel more fair, it loses some of its like nuance and character or more streamlined or more like rules first, as opposed to feeling of how it feels to play first, that it's just a little bit less interesting. So things I really liked in here, I really like the combat patrol in particular. I think that's well written and done as like an entry level combat patrol. And also I think give a better combat patrol experience in the current space brain one. So yeah, dark angels for combat patrol, I think is going to be great. Um, and then I really like the inner circle detachment and the, the general stuff for the, the death wing in general. I understand why they cut the command squad. Cause they're just not doing that. They're not doing, they're not doing kits anymore that are all about you making your own imagination and conversions of this stuff. So the rules don't reflect that. But again, I think that kind of reinforces my argument with where the codex design and the rules design is going. It's like, nope, these are, these are manuals for the products we make not inspirational books to unleash the creativity with these model kits we designed that are full of parts that give you access to, you know, like up it's, it's like a, a, a pile of Legos, make what you want out of it. That's not what these are anymore. These are model kits that are built one way. And this is the manual for how that, that gets reflected on the tabletop. And while I think that's clean and efficient, I don't, and like probably good for where they're driving this sort of like competitive meta driven analytical kind of mindset of like how this game is played. Some of the soul is definitely missing. And I think Asmodee and, um, and like the losing of like the Deathwing command squad is the best example of like my, my thesis for that argument. You can see them trimming out the character stuff and the conversion and possibility stuff to have it be more, nope, this is the kit we make. This is the things that come out of that kit. Here's the rules that reflect those kits. We don't want anyone to screw this up. And, and by kind of like pulling the top and the bottom together, you get this sort of like, uh, by making it, making more clean and less messy, you, and, and pulling out the innovation stuff and like the capacity to innovate and create cool, like combinations of things. Um, it loses some of its soul. And so there's my, there's my thought with this. It's pretty, it's a lot of, it's a lot of sizzle. Um, but the stake to me is in when these books unleash the creativity of the hobbyist and I, there's, you can see that getting chipped away at as they go through the range and consolidate the range and create new products that are versions of the old range that have less options and customization in it. So very pretty miniatures, super fun to build and paint. Uh, but overall I would say a, a more, a more in the middle mediocre sort of version of what came before it in certain ways from like a creativity point of view and from the idea that you're allowing hobbyists to use this as the way that they express their hobby. Like I, and, and that to me, I think is kind of where I feel about 40 K in general is that you used to have, these used to be manuals for all the possibilities that you could make out of them. And now it's more like a, a uh, catalog of options that you don't get a lot of say in. It's just, these are the, these are the things you can purchase, not here's the bucket of ways you can mix and match the, the Legos that we're selling you. So there it is. My review of uh, Deathwing Assault, the new Dark Angels army box from Games Workshop. I hope you enjoyed that in the new format. Let me know in the comments what you thought about me doing it this way. Obviously, one of the things people are always saying is like, bring the camera more in focus. I want to read the pages. And it's like, I'm not, that's not what I'm doing here. I'm reviewing a product. I'm not scanning and uploading the internet. I'm not an internet pirate. Uh, so I kind of like this format. I'm also not freezing to death. And we're also not listening to the jet engine in the back take off <laughs> to, keep the, to keep the sound stage warm. Uh, and you can also check out my review of Pariah Nexus, the, the new Crusade book, which is the core crusade book for um, Warhammer 40,000. So check that out today too. Uh, big thanks for watching. Thanks to Games Workshop for sending along the box. Check out. Thanks to Amash. Hope we're getting.